So in today's training, we're going to be talking about um, women-owned small businesses, in particular, the set aside and, and uh, really which agencies are driving towards that. So I'm going to talk about that. But I wanted to begin with uh, just talking about this song. I, I love this song by Extreme called More Than Words. Uh, I play it for my sons um, every night before they go to bed. I have some songs or something I play to them to kind of set their minds. They're 10 years old. And I like playing More Than Words occasionally when I'm reminding them about the value of saying I'm sorry when the behavior remains the same, right? And and I'm like, you don't need to say you're sorry. I'll know it, right? My my favorite line is a little brutal and it's not real, but it's very visual. And I say, look, you don't have to apologize for punching me in the face. If you would just stop punching me in the face, I pretty much know that you're sorry. But if you're still doing that, then I'm doubting your apology. And the words to the lyrics begins with um, saying I love you is not the words I want to hear from you. It's not that I want you to not say that, but if you only knew how easy it would be to show me how you feel, more than words is all you have to do to make it real. Then you wouldn't have to say that you love me because I'd already know. And I really like how this song applies to the federal government and women-owned small business set-asides. Stop telling me how much you love minority-owned businesses. Stop telling me how much you love women-owned uh, small businesses. When the data is telling me something different, I'm not quite believing what's coming out of your mouth. Right. And so as we move forward, I really want you to keep that in mind is that it's really important to track on the data more than what the government says. Right. So more than words. In today's training for federal agency, uh, federal agencies who love small businesses, I want to cover down on five main topics. And if I have time, I'll go into the tool itself to show you how I, I do it. But I'll tell you at least. Um, so the first thing is I just want to make sure I'm level setting and explaining why I think it's so important to understand uh, which agencies love us and, and or women on small businesses and and also to understand um, you know how to spot the difference. So then going into the second bullet, I'm going to talk about which agencies are doing the most set aside to women on small businesses. Um, I'm going to talk about direct awards. So first I'll talk about the entire federal government spending and then I'll go into the agencies. And then I'm going to wrap up with the top NICs. So you see which uh, typical NICs codes are being used for set asides. So there might be one that you have and you go, oh, they're not doing any set asides. That should be a flag for you. Um, so just tracking on that. That's what we're going to cover down on today. If you don't know who I am, my name is Neil McDonald. I want to welcome you to my federal sales training where I provide tips for success in the federal market. I spent 20 years in the federal market as a small business owner. And since 2018, I've been teaching people like you that government contracting is not a secret. It's just a process. When we follow a process A to Z, we're going to have repeatable, predictable results. And that's what I want for you. If you haven't done this already, subscribe to our newsletter, Government Contracting Success. Um, that newsletter is where we put out all sorts of good information. Just this morning, I put out a newsletter article that had uh, 10 previous trainings about basically how women-owned small businesses can have success, and I put some other data in there. That's an example of something we put out. It is a ton of value. I easily uh, could be packaging that up as like a master course, but I just do it in the lives, and then I put it together in a place where you can get to it. Okay, so let's get started diving into um, uh, why it's important to know which agencies say they love compared to actually love uh, women-owned small businesses, right? And again, this is more than words. Um, when I look at this, I want to make sure that um, I'm looking at the data, not looking at the, not listening to somebody say how much they love women-owned small businesses. But the data, as you'll see in a second, will tell me exactly which agencies love women-owned small businesses. So one of the first things is, um, you know, it's really important not to waste your time. As a small business, whether you're a small business owner or somebody on the small business team um, trying to drive forward for your company to get into agencies and grow your company, you don't want to be wasting time anywhere where you're not going to be effective. And so if you're going towards agencies that really don't love small businesses, then, you know, you're wasting time. Uh, the second thing is you don't want to go where you're unwanted. And, and this kind of goes into a couple of things I'll be sharing, but um, why knock on doors of people who don't believe what you believe? There's this great line that says, um, you know, don't try to convince people to believe what you believe. Find people who already believe it and work with them. When I look for customers, I look for customers who believe in the process I teach. That way we're off to the races. But if I have to convince them in a sales call, for example, to believe in the process and, hey, the process works, I'm like, you're not ready for me. And it's the same thing with you and your customer. If you're going to... Um, be knocking on doors. You don't want to convince them of the value of women-owned small businesses. You want to go somewhere where they want to find and work with women-owned small businesses. Uh, I, I describe it as no set-aside, no love. 
the quickest way to do, have a criteria around which agencies love uh, women-owned small businesses is the set aside, not the dollars spent. If they're not setting aside opportunities for women-owned small businesses, then they don't love women-owned small businesses. I, I would submit they don't even really like women-owned small businesses. If, if they like us and they love us, they will set aside opportunities for women-owned small businesses. And the same thing for 8A or hub zone or service disabled. Um, you can tell the Department of Veterans Affairs loves service disabled veteran-owned businesses. They do a massive amount of set aside. In fact, um, so much so that it puts them ahead of even the veterans ahead of everybody else, right? That's because they're super committed to that. Makes sense. It's the VA, service disabled veteran owned, right? Well, across the government, other agencies should be showing that same kind of love to SDBOs, right? And then also women owned small businesses, hub zone and 8A. And so if I don't see set asides, then I know that agency doesn't love us. Um, and then the, the other thing why it's important to know which agencies is because if you're a woman owned small business and you took the time to get certified as a woman owned small business under the SBA program, certify.sba.gov, if you went in there and got that certification, which 11,000 small businesses have already got that, um, then you want to be making revenue faster. And it's and especially kind of using that set aside. You didn't get the set aside tag for uh, to not use it. You want to use it. And so you want to be finding the agencies that are awarding to women owned small businesses through set asides, et cetera, because it will help you grow revenue faster. Going back to that thing about if you're going where you're unwanted, it's kind of hard to grow your revenue if you're fighting an uphill battle the whole time. I wanted to hit two myths before I switched over. Um, the first thing is this myth, you got to get it out of your head if it's in your head. Agencies uh, do not care about small business goals. Um, you know, this idea that, oh, agencies want to hit small business goals. First off, people might want to hit small business goals, like a person in an agency or command or whatever, they might be caring about it. But for the holistic approach, to think an agency wants to hit it is, um, is not really understanding how, how things work there. But more importantly, looking at an agency that is missing a goal and say, oh, they really want to hit their goals and they're not hitting it. And what I say is if an agency is not hitting its goal, it's because they don't care. It's not because they can't do it. They have billions of dollars. They can do anything they want. I could help them literally in one year hit their goals. It's um, when you look at an agency and you see that they're not hitting their goals, especially if they're really, really poor performing, 5% woman on small business goal, and they're like down in the 1%, those guys don't care. If they care, they go up. What you want to do is to find um, the 5%. I don't know where I say it in my deck, but I might as well say it now is you want to go where you're not needed. And what that means is you want to go to an agency that is exceeding the 5% woman on small business goal. Don't think to yourself, oh, they hit the 5%, they're going to stop. No, if they hit 5%, then they sure care and love women on small businesses and they got no problem going to 10%. There's not a conspiracy to hold you down or to hold you up. They just appreciate the value women on small businesses bring. And the last uh, myth going with what I just said there is don't be trying to target the agencies that are missing their goals. I see people do this sometimes and I hope it's not you. Don't look across and go, well, this agency's hitting it. I'll, I'll ignore that. These guys are doing horrible. They really need us. They don't. You're going to show up and you're going to realize that if they wanted to hit their goal, they could. It's not that hard. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the set asides, the dollars, et cetera. And I'll try to track my time. If I have time, I'm going to show you USA Spending, where I get this data from. And it's also where you can go in uh, to learn more about the, the data and, and drive into the agencies that might align more with what you're trying to do. But um, I wanted to start off with this term gaslighting because it's it's like one of my 400 videos, by, you know, over 400 videos and tr these trainings that I've done. And this is like one of the first times I've wondered if that word was like, uh, whether it should be in there or not. But gaslighting is this term that comes from domestic violence. And some people tend to make it a political thing or something, but gaslighting, the whole idea of it is making me think something, basically making me think I'm crazy about something I'm seeing. And this is what uh, is happening with, in my opinion, women owned small business numbers that the government puts out. They're like, oh, we, we spent 28 billion with women owned small businesses. And I say, no, I, I say you're trying to make me feel like you're doing such a good job with women owned small businesses. But the reality is women owned small businesses for set asides, they had less than $1 billion in the entire federal government set aside to them, less than a billion dollars. 
Yet the government claims that, you know, $28 billion went there. And so you understand the facts. Women-owned small businesses did win $28 plus billion in 2022, but they did it because of their own efforts. They did it despite the government not doing set-asides. The whole point of the small business program and a 5% goal for women-owned small businesses is to, you know, set aside 5% of the dollars, not to luckily let it happen with uh, women-owned small businesses who are pushing through on 8A certifications or SDBO or total small or even women-owned small businesses who compete full and open. That's their effort, not the government's effort that got those dollars. And so um, I really want you to pay attention to this because this is going to go into this idea of thinking about where are all the set-asides? How come I don't see set-asides? So um, in 2022, there was $680 billion spent, but only $1 billion of it was set aside to women-owned small businesses. And you can see right here on my screen, that was 2,000 contracts, basically. And a lot more contracts happened in 2023, which is an interesting thing. Um, oh, I, I, I have a little, uh, not a little, I have a big number problem there. When I, uh, you can see in FY 2023, 1 billion was set aside. Ignore that 4 billion, that's a mistake. Um, but 745 billion is how much the government spent and only 1 billion of it went to women-owned set-asides. So they almost doubled the amount of contracts and did not really move the dollar value volume at all, the dollar uh, amount at all, right? And so they claimed that they did $27 billion uh, that went to women-owned small businesses. And these are the type of things that are odd to me, right? The, the budget that they spent went up significantly, but not women-owned small businesses portion. That actually went down. It's like, how does it go down when the overall spending is going up? And it's, to me, again, this idea that, um, they're not tracking it. They don't care. And by the way, the reason I'm saying all this is I, I'm not trying to complain about it. I'm certainly pointing out what I don't like, but I'm not complaining about it. What I'm trying to say is we need to change our approach to go get the dollars because they're sure not going to give it to us. Um, but you can get the dollars for sure. So here is sole sources. I just wanted to quickly put it in. Uh, women on small businesses don't get sole sources, but I figured I'd show you in 22, there was 105 million, 130 million but less than 500, you know, right around 400 um, contracts in 2022 and 2023. What this just tells you is ignore sole source. If it happens, it's a complete anomaly. You might as well buy a lottery ticket, right? And so for the women-owned small business program, you really want to be tracking on the set-asides. And here I've got the two different data sets side by side so you can see it. Um, but in here, you know, you can tell the difference in 22, 800 million going to set aside, but only 100 million going to sole source. And the same thing with um, FY23, 1 billion going to set aside and 100 million going to 130 million going to sole source. So know the numbers, right? Understand the difference in there. So let's go ahead and look at uh, the agencies who favor women-owned small businesses. And if you look at no other slide that I present, um, I really think this is the slide to pay attention to because it tells you the agencies in FY 2022 and 2023, so the last two fiscal years, it tells us which agencies through their actions, more than words, are um, love women-owned small businesses. And the way I define that they love us is they put a set aside towards it. By the way, when I say us, I don't have a woman-owned small business, but I'm just one of you today. <laughs> um, but look at the amounts coming through and, and you start seeing this trend. Army is heads and shoulders above um, anybody else, right? So if you look at uh, 2023 and 2022, they're right around 200 million. And the next closest one is the Air Force in 23. And remember that budget went up. So there was this increase in spending, which is good. But the Air Force is half of what the Army is, you know, le more, uh, less than half. And same thing with the Navy, the Air Force and the Navy. But when you look at this, one of the first things you should see is that the Army, Navy, and Air Force in 2022 and 2023, they sit there at the top, these three agencies. And so if I was a woman-owned small business, I would be looking at DOD. And by the way, you don't have to look at prime contracts immediately. If you see this, you might set up a two-year strategy to try to get in, get subcontracts, begin to get experience in the Army, Navy, or Air Force. And then as you move forward, you're able to then go after prime contracts, but you've put yourself in to the Department of Defense if you haven't got there already, but now you're putting yourself into the top three agencies or the one major Department of Defense that clearly loves using women-owned small businesses. They clearly make a commitment through set-asides 
to work with women-owned small businesses. Um, the other one that sits that I like that sits at the top is Noah. You can see him in position four uh, for 22 and in position five for 2023. In both years, they're 50 million plus, right? And that's a good spend. Noah is under uh, Department of Commerce, so it's showing you know putting commerce right up the top there. Um, and then as you come down, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you look at 22, but I'll talk about 2023. NIH is part of HHS, right? And this is a big deal because when you look at the top 10, there's nobody else in HHS, um, and so that's something to track on. I'll show you something different with Soul Source, but right here, this tells me that if I'm a woman-owned small business inside of HHS, then I should be looking towards and talking to NIH. And by the way, 65 million is nothing. It is a complete drop in the hat. I wish I had time to show you like what the 8A small businesses get, et cetera. Um, but this money is spread across many, many agencies. And so uh, 65 million, if I looked at that, it's probably not representing a lot of contracts at NIH, but it does show you that they do set aside and you want to get in there. Um, so the next one is uh, USAID. And um, and then coming back to number seven is, is DOD. These ones drop pretty significantly. So DISA is the Defense Information Security Agency or Administration or whatever, um, or Services Administration, I think. Um, but they're 33 million, right? That's a drop in the bucket compared to the Navy, let alone the Army. And so when I look at these things, I'm really trying to align where, where are they spending um, with my designation, you would want to do, by the way, this exact same thing if you have a contract vehicle. Which agencies love my contract vehicle? If you have a NAICS code, right? Which agencies love my NAICS code? Um, we have a customer that does additive manufacturing, and we thought this one agency would love it. And it turns out they love it so much that they actually do it themselves, and they're a bad agency target for us. And so that's fine. By learning that, you re redirect your energy to go where you're needed or um excuse me, where you're wanted. And it's the same thing here as you start looking down, right? So um, of the of the FY 2023 agencies that are in the top 10, uh, I think it's five of them, Army, Air Force, Navy, uh, DISA, and DLA. So five of them are in DOD. This is an important thing to remember because if some of them, uh, if they really love women-owned small businesses in DOD, then your ability to get in, find set-asides, build past performances that build on each other, it's a very real uh, activity for you. So this next slide, I just wanted to uh, uh, flip it over a little bit on the direct awards, right? I, I said there was not a lot, but you can see the same thing. I, I actually don't even want to spend a lot of time because it's just token uh, token amount of dollars that's being spent. But if you look in, it's just spread across a lot of different agencies, except for the army, everybody's doing five or 10 million. Um, you can come back and look at this in the replay, but I want to come here because I can save some time and go over and show you how I get this data. But I did want to show you um, for the women owned small businesses, what are the top NAICs that are being, um, that have set asides for their requirements, right? And so these are pretty good. If you look at it, depending on what business you're in, um, if you look at uh, the first one and uh, really the first one, the second one, the fourth one, and the sixth one are all basically IT services. You could argue the third one is too, but let's leave that one out. But other computer related services, it's kind of a catch all um, bucket, right? It's these NAICS codes are really not that helpful because it covers everything. Um, but it is pretty clear that it's a catch all for IT services. And they're doing 186 million in there. So if you're in the IT space, this is great. This 541330, I would submit most of it is probably coming from the Navy if I filtered it down because the Navy has Seaport Next Gen. They use 541330 on that contract vehicle and IT uh, work comes through there. So the chances of that being in there uh, is still IT there. Um, and then you get into administrative management and support services around the uh, office activity, 100 million in there. So when you start looking at um, USA spending, which I'll show you in a second, I want you to think about what is your NAICS code. You could also try the same thing with keywords. It's a little harder, but what's your NAICS code? And then see which agencies are tracking on uh, what you sell. I might try this 541330 in a second. So let me, um, let me stop sharing my screen for one second and switch over to the desktop.
Okay, pretty positive I'm sharing the desktop. I'm gonna to go to USA Spending. Apparently I'm not. USA, come on. There it is. All right, just took a second to get there. Um, I wanted to show you how I use this, right? If you come into USA Spending, the button I hit really fast with uh, search award data. So here's the link up there. It takes you to the page. And this is how I start driving through. So if I just looked at 2023, and I'm gonna go use a couple of examples uh, for the last few minutes we have. Um, if I come in, I'm looking at 2023. So I'm looking at the time period. Let me zoom in for a second. Um, so the fiscal year, right? I'm gonna look at 2023. Next thing I'm looking for, I always like to choose contracts and it's just telling me I don't want grants or loans or any of that other stuff. Um, and then if I come down, the other thing I was trying to say, so let's come down here to the set asides, right? I wanna find women owned set asides. I'm down at the bottom of the filters. I'm just expanding this window. And I always, when I do this training, I always loop in economically disadvantaged women owned small business and down here at the bottom, um, women-owned small businesses. So if I just search that, if I just search that for one quick second, right, this is what we've been looking at. This is the $1 billion that went to set aside. You can see the filter right here at the top. The time period is 2023, it's all contracts and it's um, small business women-owned and economically disadvantaged women-owned small businesses. So you're able to see that. If you haven't gone through USA Spending, take the time, take several hours and get used to it, start becoming an expert. But I'm looking at this time tab and I can cruise through on several ta tables, like, I mean, uh, tabs, looking at the tables. This is where I'm able to see the number of contracts. Um, over here is where I look at the agencies. So it's agencies and sub agencies. This is where I'm able to see who the top ones are. Um, if you wanted to see the top 20, the top 30, you can just hit the next 10, for example. And you're able to see right here that, uh, again, actually looking at some of this, I'm, I'm able to see the spread, but there's Census Bureau for Commerce and HHS. So you're able to start looking at it, but you can see it's it's kind of nothing. I wanna do a different search though. I was saying, what if you were trying to find out which agencies and how much is going towards your NAICS code? I can leave this the filters I had the same, but right here, I'm gonna go to the NAICS code and let's try that first one that we said 541330. And when I click this, I'm just gonna search really quick. And so at the top, just coming to the top really quick. At the top, you can see the search is 2023, all contracts. There's the NAICS code. It actually is cut short, but it's 541330. And then the same thing, women owned small business set asides. What I'm looking for is a couple of things. Here's the 145 or I guess 158 billion or million, excuse me, that went in this. But if I look at the categories of agencies and I say, show me which agencies, and again, you got to go to sub agencies to really get a better detail. I, I was telling you, I thought the Navy would be at the highest and they are, right? There's the Navy doing um, 30, 39 million, right? So they're doing pretty well there. Um, but I'm also able to look in here and go, well, I do 541330. Who else is awarding on that? And I can start looking at, um, this information, it allows me to dig into not just the agencies, but I can see is the type of work I do, the type of work that's being set aside. So it's ironic here that the recipient, <laughs> so this is always fun for me when I look at the data. Why on earth is Lockheed in here when I'm searching for women-owned small business, right? And so sometimes you just got to track the data and read into it, but I absolutely would be looking into that and trying to figure it out. Um, but I can look at the type of work, right? By scrolling through, and today's not a training on, on this, but I can start looking in and just seeing what's in here with, uh, you know, oops, sorry, with the basic descriptions and to try to figure out where are they looking at it um, and where, where, what are they awarding, et cetera. So anyways, let me zoom back out. That's just a quick way of showing you this. If you haven't got into USA spending, this is where I get my data when I sit there and try to find out which companies or agencies love women-owned small businesses, I come into USA Spending. I look in here to see what they're saying. Let me come back to the deck. Um, so it was 139 million for 541330. That was the Navy's. So almost all of it in FY 2023 went to the Navy. 
Uh, here's what I want you to remember coming out of this, right? The, one of the biggest things is go where you're not needed. Find the agencies that are awarding to women-owned, or excuse me, not awarding, but uh, doing women-owned small business set-asides. You can go in and start finding out um, which ones do the most, because if they're doing them, then you can find an opportunity you like, talk to the contracting officer and, and begin to try to encourage them to set that one aside. The idea is to get in early, a whole separate training, but when you get in early, and you talk to the contracting officer, there's a way to begin to try to encourage them to set aside even more to women-owned small business. And the contracting shops that are gonna do that are the ones that are already uh, setting aside a lot to women-owned small businesses. Number two is what I just showed you. So match up your agency to uh, your NAICS code to see where the fit is. And when you're in there, you can do this in uh, FPDS, you can go in and find contracting officers. So you can reach out begin to introduce yourself, talk to them, see if there's new opportunities, et cetera. You can find those contracting officers and see what their forecast is or where they might be tied into a forecast, but begin to build relationships with contracting officers that have already uh, seen the value of setting aside opportunities or their requirements for women-owned small business. If they've done it once, they'll do it again. If they've done it 10 times, they're guaranteed gonna do it again, right? And you just need to build that relationship. Um, as you move into your day and you're, you're chasing down government contracting, just remember that government contracting, it's not a secret. It's just a process. I hope you have a good day. I'll see you in the next training.